I'm getting ready now for my second portrait on this, uh, on this paper. Um, another quick sketch, it's going to be something where I focus on, in particular, the kind of expression that I find on the model, um, the orientation of the head, and also to kind of show the features of the previous portrait, um, but shed light on in like a different context. And um, this is something usually, you know, when I work with a model on several projects, it's something that uh, inevitably comes up, but I, I really actually kind of enjoy the idea of kind of experiencing this all on kind of one sheet of paper. It becomes interesting then that I consider the proportion of the head as well. And while I'm kind of uh, arranging the head on the canvas, um, I'm actually going to just borrow a little bit the set of proportions that I made on the previous portrait, kind of transplant those more or less over to the kind of second head. Um, I'm planning also for a third head to be actually on this far right hand side and I think I have the pose for that figured out. Um, what I want to do is have one model looking maybe slightly inward, another model looking slightly outward in the opposite direction when you have them in the middle, and then a third model uh, or a third portrait of this same model um, actually looking inward almost in profile. Um, and so I'm going to get to study the head from these three perspectives. One fairly straight on, another the head tilted back a little bit in, uh, in this sort of like haughty kind of um, uh, pose and then the other uh, as I said kind of looking inward and this will um, both give I think a little bit of a different psychology from each pose um, but also from a compositional perspective it does deal with kind of sight lines right. Um, what I want to avoid really is having uh, say a model like this one um, maybe looking out towards the, uh, the outer edge of the canvas um, or to have a model in profile again looking out towards the outer edge of the canvas. Um, you know for what this is you know kind of a classic uh, concept of portrait study um, I want to abide a little bit by those rules. Now I was actually just working with a, um, a student online the other day and the project that she was working on was really to have a, um, a portrait totally in profile looking outward from the uh, or to the right hand side of the canvas um, with a kind of cast shadow on a wall that kind of stretched behind the model um, filling up the kind of left uh, two-thirds of the of the canvas. Um, this is a classic case of using a compositional ploy or arrangement um, in an abnormal fashion uh, but to induce a certain effect and um, I thought the solution really was a, a quite, uh, quite interesting one. Um, and so looking at this canvas now, as I said, um, I'm kind of going for a little bit more of a kind of classic portrait style in this and that I, I want the, the portraits to kind of be engaging the viewer or at least engaging the space inward, um, drawing you kind of towards the center. Um, so that's really my focus for, for this one. I may of course kind of get into a place where I, I kind of um, work a little bit on some of the features of this previous portrait. Um, I'm not made of stone. Inevitably something will grab me about this and I will have to uh, tickle away at it. Um, but for the most part I'm just kind of putting that one in the past and I'm going to get to work on the, uh, uh, the central head in this series. The materials that I'm using today are my Tombow Mono Zero eraser got my 0.5 millimeter Pentel pencil with uh, 2B lead in it. Um, I do have my 2.3 millimeter Pentel mechanical pencils as well. Um, one of them that has B lead and the other that has H. Um, I've also got a 2H pencil uh, from Stadler uh, that is um, inside of this General's pencil extender. Um, and I also have my uh, 0.9 millimeter white chalk pencil from Pentel. Um, this one in particular I think is just such a great resource for sketches like this um, because I, I do need to have a kind of control over the hatch mark type aesthetic that I'm, that I'm uh, creating with graphite um, and I find that uh, in particular the, um, the narrow kind of width of this lead um, actually gives me a little bit more of a similar feel to the look of the graphite that I'm using, right? So I'm hatching a lot with the graphite. I would like to be hatching a lot also with uh, the with white chalk in a way that creates a little bit of a, a harmonious um, 
balance right in a, in a style of the application of value. This second pose uh, I've actually been looking at for quite a while and it's one that um, I feel like brings out a lot of character, a lot of expression to it. Um, here we have a model uh, just looking straight at you. There is a little bit of a sense of engagement. Uh, this next pose is, uh, as I said before, going to be um, given this little bit of a kind of a haughty air, right, where uh, the model is quite literally looking down their nose at the viewer. Starting to indicate here the, uh, the roundness of this muzzle form. Um, and I think I also want to start to do that with the uh, side plane of the cheek and jaw on that side as well. You know, I'm just trying to arrange the kind of mouth in relationship to the, um, to the nose and uh, it's a pretty delicate balance there. And if I get it wrong, I'm not gonna have like um, a lot of success kind of moving forward with the halftone shapes in that area. Uh, so I've just got to kind of get it in one, nail it in, and, uh, you know, not uh, kind of mess around searching for it. Um, it's a very kind of romantic notion in drawing that we can actually draw with chaos. Um, and it's, of course, it's an advanced topic. It doesn't go right alongside uh, working with proportion, for instance. Um, but it is one of those uh, on the horizon kind of ideas that I always kind of looked to and was quite inspired by. Um, were artists that I felt like were uh, working a little bit with this concept. Um, you know, artists, and I'm sure I've mentioned them before, but artists like Charles Weed. Um, when I was kind of coming up as a student, uh, I was so enchanted by his work precisely because I recognized that he knew also that there was this, um, this other kind of brush that you could paint with. This brush that was uh, a pattern inside the chaos that you found in nature. Um, and that's what I knew I wanted to be able to investigate as well. I didn't know how to do it. Um, <laughs> most of my student days were kind of searching around for the magic bullet, uh, of which, of course, there really isn't one. Um, but eventually I feel like I figured out my way to, uh, to work with order and chaos together. I'm bringing this one to the close now and um, I'm quite, uh, quite satisfied with the uh, the result of this search. Um, I'm sure that there's a couple things uh, when I come back and work on the third head that I'll want to attend to, but um, uh, my search here, my kind of journey here, I think it's been a really interesting and kind of fruitful one. Um, I've really enjoyed uh, getting this, this attitude in the eyes, this sense of like um, uh, almost a, a pining but a restrained look in the eyes. Um, I think it really actually kind of suits the model. It's very strong features and i um, really happy that I was able to kind of tap into that. Just want to push these eyebrows a little bit further and uh, make them maybe a little bit bushier <laughs> so that uh, we get that really great personality that comes out of a strong set of eyebrows. 